This is my Maytag over the range microwave. I installed this in when I built my house 18 years ago. So this thing is really old. And the thing I like about this is that it doesn't have a round turntable. The turntable moves back and forth, which is really neat because I can put like a really big casserole dish on this turntable and it just moves back and forth. And I've never seen a microwave since that's like this. There's some microwaves that have no turntable at all, but to have this go back and forth is quite unique. Everything else has these big, huge round turntables. Well, the other day I threw some food in there and I hit the button. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's making this really loud buzzing sound. And when the, the timer went off, I felt the food and the food was still cold and I knew something was wrong and the buzzing sound was a dead giveaway so we're gonna take a look to find out what this buzzing sound is well I already know what it is but I'm gonna show you what the buzzing sound is now I've rep I have worked on this microwave several times it's a great microwave because of this special turntable that goes uh, left to right and right to left and so I've resurrected this microwave several times, but it's getting to the point now that the replacement parts are almost as, cost as much as a brand new microwave. And so it's probably time to move on and to bury this old princess here. We're gonna take a look at what's called the magnetron. And the magnetron is the device that causes the microwaves. And what drives the magnetron is a big transformer inside. And those are the two primary components of a microwave. So I have the outer shell removed from the microwave. And there's a couple of things just to watch out for. If you're not familiar with microwaves, you just might want to just call a repairman. But there's this little thing right here. This is a capacitor. And a capacitor basically stores voltage. And if you happen to touch, touch them, you can get a shock. But if you can see the, the contacts are recessed in these little uh, plastic uh, cylinders. Uh, if, you wanted, if you want to discharge a capacitor, basically you'd get a screwdriver that's insulated and touch it across the two uh, connections. Since these are recessed, if you really want to discharge the capacitor, you could get a pair of insulated needle nose pliers and put the two points inside the capacitor to discharge those. But it's just best not to charge to touch them or any of the contact wires for those. You could get a pretty nice little jolt. Now down here are common little problems. There's these two little sensors right down here that can often go bad. Uh, these can overheat from heat that is rising from the stove below can uh, make these go bad. They're basically like almost like little teeny fuses. They can be checked with an ohm meter. If they become open, your microwave will not work. And also way down in here, maybe you can't see it too well, is the door switch. Those parts can go bad as well. But the big thing we're taking a look at is this little thing right here. This device right here is this big transformer. This is what creates the current that goes to the magnetron that makes a microwave possible. And right up above it, this little guy right here, that's the magnetron itself. So the transformer creates a high amount of voltage to power the magnetron. Now, when a microwave doesn't work, it can easily be the transformer or it can be the magnetron. Years ago, a, an appliance repairman showed me this little trick on what you can do to find out if the magnetron up here is bad or the transformer is bad. And it's a test that you can do to be relatively safe, but you just have to follow some safety rules. Now the transformer produces about 2000 volts and it's enough to jump and make an arc. And that's what we're gonna basically do. If we, what we're going to do is we're gonna reach in here and we're gonna unplug the magnetron from the transformer. 
we're going to just pull the plug off the magnetron and just about it's just about a quarter of an inch away and we're not going to touch it okay we're going to have our hands clear of this area and we're going to turn the microwave on just for a second or two and so once it turns on we should see an arc if the transformer is good and to stop the arc we're just going to open up the door and everything should stop okay so we're going to hit clear and here we go so how cool is that so we saw an arc and so we know that the transformer is good and most likely the magnetron is bad so we're going to pull the magnetron and if you think of the name of this part magnetron is for magnets there's magnets in the magnetron and they're kind of like a ceramic magnet if they're broken it can cause the magnetron not to work and so when we take the magnetron out if the magnets are broken it's a, it's a sure fire sign that the magnetron is indeed bad now as i'm digging into to this microwave i don't know where these wires go but i'm going to go ahead and take these wires off the capacitor and i'm going to go ahead and short these out i'm wearing leather gloves and so i'm touching the two contactors and i didn't see any sparks but this should discharge that capacitor so i shouldn't have any surprises as i'm taking this stuff apart so this is the magnetron this is what creates the waves for the microwave to vibrate the, the uh, water molecules to heat the food and these right inside of here are the bits of broken magnets so you can see here's one broken magnet there and if we turn over to this other side maybe we could push another piece of broken magnet out well you can see the crack of the other broken magnet but anyway if you can see inside these are the broken magnets and so the thing that was making that really nasty vibration were these magnets vibrating back and forth so that ma this magnetron is definitely shot and this magnetron for this particular model i think was just shy of 300 dollars and so when you're getting to this kind of price for a magnetron i mean we're almost getting to the price of a brand new uh microwave and the thing about it is i've replaced this once before and i've replaced some other parts and it's just getting to the point that this is just not working like it used to the display is old and you can the LEDs on the display you can barely read anything anymore so this microwave suited its purpose and the purpose was good but it's time to move on so my wife did her research and this is what she came up with and this is a really nice microwave this too is a Maytag has a 10-year warranty now unlike the other one this has a round turntable so the neat thing about this this is a convection oven so it has a heating element back inside there that can blow hot air and actually bake by convection any food we put in here and this has an extra large turntable right here and we can actually put a large cas casserole dish on here and actually turn the turntable off so uh, it, this, this has all the bells and whistles uh, it has all kind of menu options on here we've tried the popcorn option and you know how you always get I'm not sure what they call, I'm not sure if they call called gray ladies but the little pieces of unpopped popcorn but the popcorn menu on here works really good and what's really nice about this it is super super quiet let me just give you an example I mean it's just silent as silent can be but this has a lot of great options it has a, it actually has metal racks in here and the metal racks are designed in such a way that it won't arc and so this uh, microwave we got it from Best Buy and you'll see the uh, model number down below and it is really good we're happy with it it costs a little bit more than a replacement magnetron but we are very happy 
with this particular microwave. This microwave is actually a little bit larger. I had to drop the, the bracket back behind there down a little bit and it sticks out a little bit farther, but we were very happy with this thing. So this microwave, I actually give it four stars. So we had to wait about a month to get this. I don't know if there's a backlog on microwaves, but we are very happy with this. Lots of options and uh, it does a very good job. So anyway, in case you have any problems with uh, your Magnetron, if you want to try fixing things yourself, you can. This is just a way to tell the difference whether the Magnetron is bad or if your transformer is bad, just remember there's lots of sharp uh, items in here. Watch out for capacitors. But if you kind of do things logical, there's lots of videos out on YouTube on how to test for these uh, overheat sensors here. And I mean, there's sensors all over this thing. I mean, there's another overheat sensor right down in here. And we have some other sensors there. But anyway, I hope you learned something. Uh, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'll put them down in the comments. And, and please subscribe, and I will send you another video soon.